Hello everyone! Digital transformation hasn't got a single face. Each company faces different challenges. What's common though is that it's never been an easy process. A difficult level raises up with the scale and the business volumes. How about starting from the level hard? Well-established fashion retail business, 1,600 employees in 40 countries, 500 million euro revenue a year, multi-channel e-commerce already doing great numbers. Today we're gonna discuss how digital transformation looks like at this scale. And there is no better person to ask about this than Stefan Sandner, the Director of Digital Intelligence at Marco Polo. I catch Stefan leading a massive digital transformation project implementing the headless e-commerce platform with a goal to integrate all the channels and streamline the core marketing and product related processes. Hello Stefan, it's really cool to have you here. Thanks for accepting my invitation. Thanks, uh, nice to be here too. Uh, really looking forward to the talk. Stefan, you used to work at Marco Polo for about five years already, started as a UX manager. Would you tell us a little bit more about your background? Yes, uh, UX was just a start. Um, after that, I quickly took over the e-commerce developers and UX designers and gave them a voice within the company. Uh, one thing came to another and we quickly were able to grow the developer unit heavily. Uh, within the digital unit right now, uh, we try to combine the best um, business concept persons with our software development, uh, the data engineers, and uh, just recently we opened a little big team uh, where we combine data engineers with data analysts, data scientists, uh, the alignment of goals from concept strengths mm. to tech capabilities combined with an eager project management uh, gives us speed and autonomy within the company. I guess that we first met somewhere in autumn last year uh, and you were starting a new project at Marco Polo. What is this project all about? The simple way to describe it is uh, we will set our e-commerce architecture towards headless. Um, mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, we're building an e-commerce ecosystem that gives us the driver's seat for all future challenges. Um, and e-commerce is just one of them. So uh, the, the first question is, uh, wh why headless? What are the business values that headless architecture provides uh, in your case for your business? Like you, you need to know all these processes that are running usually in a, a on a commercial platform, um, you only stage once a night, uh, then you have the cash needed to build up. Um, we, we don't want that anymore. We want to have a product live when it's in stock immediately or when it gets back into stock. Um, and that's really important for us. Um, we want to get rid of uh, all these rhythms uh, that we need to apply with traditional e-commerce software. And uh, that's why we, we um, yeah, run for headless. Wow. So uh, it gives you the opportunity to run the development process at like two different speeds, right? One from front end, the second for back end, right? Yeah. Obviously, the goal is um, to reach the same speed, um, but the front end needs to be um, quicker uh, because mm -hmm. it's consumer facing and yeah. we need to react to this. Cool. So it, it sounds like the like you said something like the e-commerce is just a first step, isn't it? True. Um, the business models uh, have become fluid during the last couple of years, uh, but still at the moment, every sales channel uh, has its own front end and back end ecosystem yeah. that leads to less efficiency and that stock, for example, um, in mm -hmm. the future, um, I'm pretty sure like uh, nearly every fashion company will face the, the same challenges. Um, but in the future, there will be one central order management for all direct to consumer channels, uh, mm -hmm. different front ends. For different purposes, uh, obviously, um, they should be built on the same stack, uh, and um, there need to be or needs to be a lot of intelligence in between. I'm pretty sure um, in your tech talk next week uh, with Matthias, uh, will, you will get even more details about the uh, concrete uh, tech setup. Um, it would be uh, credible for me to provide you with all the tech details. Uh, that's Matthias' job. Right. Uh, the interview with Matthias Zelesnin, uh head of software development at Marco Polo, is, is already in the pipeline. Uh, but uh, let's go back to the project. Uh, I, I guess it, it will somehow change the, the way of work for quite many different teams across the Marco Polo company. Um, so the question is how you introduce a change like this at this scale? Um it was quite a long process uh, process to convince the company. Um, we're not there yet, um, but we already started with the project and trying it. Uh, we're trying it to build it step by step. Um, yeah. 
the partnership between the business concept and tech made the arguments uh, clear for everybody we have within our own team. Um, in the end, everybody um, right now on board understood that this transformation will lead uh, to an advantage and give us uh, more flexibility in the future. My personal vision is to unify channels and also uh, within the organization to mm. gain process uh, advantages, tech advantages, uh, to have them on the same level. It's not only about technology, but the process will be uh, will be a big leveler. Um, lucky us uh, about you has a team that helped us convincing the others as well uh, with their business experts and um, really uh, shared their knowledge um, mm -hmm. really open. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, about you. It's also a part of, of the puzzles. Uh, so it's a backend platform uh, powering this this new new project. We will uh, talk about this a little bit uh, later on, I guess. Um, but I'm still wondering, like in an organization of this scale, um, you know, thousands of, of, of people, uh, the number of ideas and initiatives always exceeds the, the capabilities. Uh, you need to prioritize somehow to set the priorities. Uh, how you do it at Marco Polo? Absolutely true. Uh, like uh, from uh, internship to C level, everybody has an idea, uh, and yeah. uh, these ideas um, we discussed it once a month a couple of uh, years ago, um, and these talks took three to five hours a month. Uh, we really wasted a lot of time, yeah. uh, and. Um, Somehow, always the person with the loudest voice uh, gets their ticket into development, um, <laughs> yeah. and we we try to get rid of this and really mm -hmm. be fact based. Uh, we have implemented a simple scoring system, which now has five attributes uh, and a legal choker, which we need in Germany or Europe. Uh, the scores are revenue uplift, uh, uh, savings, yeah. target group value, process impact, and tech value. Um, the tech value contains something like, is it sustainable? Is it self-owned? Um, so we mm -hmm. really have a uh, hard measured facts there. Um, after assigning the scores, uh, magic happens and the tickets uh, gets the score. Um, developers just pick the most important one by their skill set. And the prior discussion uh, we just had yesterday um, took 15 minutes. Uh, most of the companies already aligned on that. Uh, mm -hmm. And that really helps a lot uh, on going into the same direction with the business. Yeah. Um, and you get you in the end, you have more time to really get into the stuff um, that is is uh, value driving, and that's really important for us. Uh, I really like this idea with uh, five attributes for for making a decision. It's very clear, and I guess uh, it is so clear and works so well um, because of the team you have. Um, so my question is, uh, with whom do you work on a daily basis? Who reports to you? Uh, and who you need to consult regarding the, the business decisions? The team is, uh, oh, within the team, we have different roles. Um, the digital business development, obviously, which um, is the first partnership uh, with getting ideas to track. Um, we all know this idea dropping stuff. Um, that is always a problem. And the digital the business development helps with that. Um, then we have a team called software development. Uh, Surprise, surprise, uh, software developers are within it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just recently, like uh, this week, we launched a team data intelligence. Uh, we would really try to uh, build data infrastructures and uh, intelligent reports. Um, mm -hmm. They are just fixed in the organigram, um, but within the projects and um, all the stuff that is happening, we need uh, to partner fluidly. Um, like, so the business developer is working with a front end developer uh, and the other way around, whoever leads the project. Mm -hmm. um, and we really try to establish these partnerships uh, within the unit uh, and also loop in um, abroad business units like e-commerce retail organizations, right. uh, the classic IT teams, uh, logistics, sales, uh, whatever you can think about. We try to really have them as partners here within the unit. Um, and uh, there also were some interesting things like uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, we partners with totally new uh, units like HR or communications um, to react really quickly to the changing uh, environment we yeah. have at the moment uh, and to really provide the business with the needs uh, or yeah, provide business with solutions uh, for the needs they had. Um, so you see the variety is high and um, again, e-commerce is just one aspect. <laughs> awesome. I, I really like this uh, interdisciplinary approach. Uh, and involving you know the, the business stakeholders into the process and clear you know uh, criteria for making the decisions 
But in uh, in the second episode of, of this webinar, Kelly Gage, uh, Chief Product Officer of Commerce Tools, said that there is uh, one more successful aspect of uh, of introducing microservices and, in your case, headless architecture, which is a project sponsor. So someone uh, w with a gut and a knowledge to make and then support tough decision because there is, a, I guess, a lot of uh, tough decisions. Uh, so starting the new idea from, from inside the tech team isn't an easy task because I guess it requires you to convince the non-tech business stakeholders that this process is, you know, worth undertaking. So I guess uh, a lot of our listeners uh, facing the same problem. So maybe you have some advice for them. I would say get the crowd, um, heavy users first, uh, and then build a story about the product. Um, that takes time. Uh, you should take your time. Um, for me, top to bottom is not sustainable anymore. Um, everybody within the project team needs to feel his part yeah. in the important decisions. Um, so afterwards, there are no excuses uh, and everybody wants to make it working on an operational stage right. later on. So everybody is on board and wants to make the project a success. So it's really important to have them on board on the first stage. Um, mm -hmm. One sponsor for me is not enough, um, but obviously in uh, in some organizations that helps politically. Right. Um, projects are team effort um, and not one-man shows. And yeah. in the end, uh, numbers count. Uh, make everything data-driven um, and even try to automate the decisions uh, which led to a project. Um, right. Really try to to be data-driven there and not do it out of own purpose. So data-driven approach means uh, putting the activities and uh, setting the goals, um, putting the measurable KPIs on top of it. So the question is how you set the KPIs for a project like this one? As mentioned, the price score um, helps a lot. Uh, with mm -hmm. simple tasks uh, that don't need a big invest. Um, classical change requests like uh, change the button color or uh, switch the process uh, on that stage or whatever, like really simple ones. Um, um, in companies like ours, there's so much unleashed potential within the IT ecosystem that mm -hmm. uh, just needs to be tackled the right way. The right way means uh, not only look at savings and revenue uplift, try to measure your right. consumers. They are the most heavy priority voice you can use uh, and you can get uh, and that's what we tried here as well um, mm -hmm. the heavy users uh, and also the consumers um, took place in our decision okay so uh so you started the transformation uh what's what sub projects and um well areas of interest does it contain that this this whole project i i guess it's not like monolithic or single you know, um, thing, but it's uh, it contains some sub projects, right? True. Um, we have divided the project into eight so named chapters. Uh -huh. um, four of them are business driven, four of them are clearly tech driven. Uh, uh -huh. So the chapter leads whether have a technical agile coach slash project manager um, or a business project manager on top uh -huh. um, that really bundles strings. Uh, the chapters are fluid uh, within the team setup. So if we need a specialist in a certain area, we include him in the discussions, uh, but he needs to take over ownership. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that's really important, like I mentioned before. Um, so far, the setup is working pretty good, mm -hmm. especially because uh, of the will of everybody uh, involved, um, as I mentioned before. So we first gained the, the will um, to really get get this thing uh, on, the, on the street. Um, and now everybody is really, really heavily motivated. Uh, the right. collaboration is completely based on Stack, Con uh, Slack, Confluence, Jira, uh, and the development workflow mm -hmm. is in Kanban um, with some special Marco Polo tuning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I have got a, a related question. Um, in your architecture, uh, which elements uh, you own, uh, which one you should own, and uh, which ones uh, should you uh, buy on the market? Um, it's hard to say, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, there is no, there is no master plan. Um, but um, I would say, like in the end, you need to take over responsibility for every part of our business model. Um, the mm -hmm. difference can be created everywhere. Yeah. Uh, for us, uh, in the case of Marco Polo, it's clearly uh, the consumer-driven systems. 
uh, like e-commerce frontends, mm -hmm. uh, B2B frontends, uh, mm -hmm. and CRM systems and stuff like that. So what was the, the reason for, for this distinction, for having this particular like front-end uh, and, and other customer-facing um, systems on, on your own? Because it's in, in the end, right, it's uh, quite a huge cost, maintenance, uh, development, new features. Why, why, to, why to own this? Why not use just you know, cloud approach? Um, the core processes within the fashion industry um, are quite similar or comparable. So we try to stick uh, to the standards there. Um, but when you look at the front ends and the front end logics, uh, they changed so heavily within the last couple of years. And I think they will even change more frequently mm -hmm. soon. Uh, so it's important to be ahead of the game uh, yeah. and make it yours and on this stage. So you say that uh, you own the systems where you can provide the, the customers with some kind of unique selling proposition, right? The unique selling proposition is uh, whether a brand or a content, yeah. uh, and um, it's also the speed. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is the framework we're using. Um, it is uh, the product availability, yeah. and we, we really be, need to be sure that this is ours. Um, obviously, yeah. there are some, some other systems which need, which need to be ours as well, um, but um, like you can group it uh, yeah. in, that, in that method. Yeah, uh, I guess I will I will get a little bit deeper into this question with with Matthias in the upcoming um, episode. Um, right. So uh, to give our listeners a scale, uh, how many resources companies like Marco Polo invest into IT and software development? Um, I would divide them by tech orientated and real software developers because. Um, in an organization like ours, you need the translation skills. So you need account management, mm -hmm. uh, project management, stuff like that, that really helps business to uh, get tech to street. Mm -hmm. um, and both of both of the parties are important. Yeah. Um, overall, we have two tech organizations divided by uh, core IT systems, uh, European stuff like that, uh, mm -hmm. and consumer and data-driven mm -hmm. IT systems, uh, which is my team. Yeah. Um, and overall, um, those two parties have around 60 people mm -hmm. uh, within the organization. Yeah. Um, just software developers uh, for the consumer and data-driven IT systems at the moment, um, we have around 15 mm -hmm. uh, with a strong plan to grow in this field. Yeah. Um, on the legacy systems or classic IT systems, we don't have any internal developers. Mm -hmm. um, but um, during the learnings we had during the cast, last couple of uh, years, mm -hmm. uh, we tried to build a software development team for ERP and stuff like that as well. Right. So it sounds pretty pretty serious. Uh, <laughs> in his famous book, Good to Great, Jim Collins wrote uh, that you need to take the right people in the bus, wrong people out of the bus. And then you have to have the right people on the right seats. So the question is about putting the uh, people on the right seats and hiring people. How you how you build your team and how you hire? Um, first of all, team fit fit is uh, the most important part. Um, you can mm -hmm. have the best specialist. Uh, when he doesn't fit the team, it won't work out. Um, every stack is different. Every product has its own character. Um, so um, yeah, that's really important. Right. We check if developers can think big and are willing uh, to work on a concept or documentation as well, mm -hmm. um, which makes life easier to jump on for others. Um, yeah. It's really important to, to have that as well. Um, so you are looking for, only... you are, you're looking for guys so willing to uh, go this extra mile, right? True. Yeah, that, that sums it up quite well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that not only counts for developers, that also counts for the business persons here mm -hmm. and that work within the unit. Um, they need to go the extra mile as well and they need to document, uh, they need to write proper concepts and they need to understand tech. Um, in the end, uh, we try to convince them with a modern and motivating tech stack. Um, that's really important uh, because uh, getting developers is not that easy, we all know. Right. Um, and we always uh, try to be ahead of the game there as well. Yeah. Um, Matt will talk a lot, uh, a lot about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like cloud first and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, cloud native. Um, most of all, don't measure speed. Um, that's really important. Um, like uh, okay. we don't count story points. We just say we want to reach the best level of quality. Mm -hmm. um, the team will be fast when the content is motivating enough. I'm pretty okay. sure. Um, 
and last but not least, include the team members in the process to make their decisions uh, long lasting um, and create a good relationship uh, between the team and the company. Um, that is mm-hmm. how we how we hire um, and involve them, um, involve everybody right. that is here. It's really important. So uh, you put a lot of uh, effort to have the the right people when you already have it. Uh, you have the operation structure in place. Uh, what, what next to start the successful project? We're a fashion company. So uh, first of all, we need to have a big focus on our business goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting more international and uh, be more scalable mm-hmm. um, is, is right now key to success. Right. Uh, and that's what we need to provide uh, the business with. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a tech team, um, it would be really nice and motivating to have own solutions which we provide for the open source community for mm-hmm. example okay. or even make them real products uh, for the market um, there are a couple of fields where we have gained advantages uh, mm-hmm. and many more to come i'm pretty sure right uh, so why not sell them to others um, but first yeah get this uh, project done the e-commerce platform ready and as soon as possible um, to kickstart uh, innovation later on right that makes uh, a lot of sense um so after afterwards you need to choose the building blocks i guess i mean uh, the software uh frameworks um, probably vendors um what are the key aspects uh to choose the the e-commerce platform um first of all we started with developers motivation um so what platform are developers mm-hmm. are most willing to work on um, right yeah the future vision uh, provided by the platform is really important. So mm-hmm. we don't want one that just sticks to the standard. Uh, mm-hmm. We want one with a vision. Um, the persons you collaborate with are really, really important. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not only about buying software. In the end, it's about partnering with persons and people. Yeah, And that needs to fit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really relevant for our decision. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, honestly, I need to say I hate these feature lists and set check marks on every feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the end, everything is possible on any platform. It's just a question of effort, uh, and yeah. so these factors are really important to us. Right. So uh, what you're saying is uh, that the relationships is also very important with the platform vendor, right? Yeah. Um, basically. A good relationship is really important for us. Um, we want to build long last, uh, lasting relationships with our partners. And mm-hmm. um, that, that really um, is key to success, I'm pretty sure. Right. Uh, so uh, getting back to our cooperation, it all started with the View Store for Next uh, open source project. Um, you, you, I can say you, you believed and invested quite a lot into View Storefront uh, because we, we've built the About You Cloud integration on the go. And that was amazing, and uh, we really appreciated it a lot. So uh, let me ask my favorite question. I always ask it. Uh, why View Storefront? <laughs> Again, developers' motivation. Uh, it just uh, is flexible. It's modern. It's well-sourced with a community, uh, and the level is enterprise enough, mm-hmm. enough uh, to run a stable and big e-commerce system on top of it. Um, flexibility is not only about code. It's yeah. also about the speed to create something new mm-hmm. uh, and the whole setup um, will help us to increase the, um, the speed towards innovation mm-hmm. uh, for our customers uh, on a rapid base, I'm pretty sure. Awesome. Uh, and to our listeners, uh, important know is uh, this integration, uh, the part of, of the project we did together is also open source on, on our GitHub, you can check it out. Um, and um, well, it seems like supporting the, the projects you are you are using is is uh, kind of in your DNA, like um, uh, Marco Polo culture, part of it. Um, why open source is, is is important to you as a company? So the contribution uh, to the open source community is key for us as a smaller group of tech guys to have the needed network uh, to get to the mm-hmm. next level from time to time. Uh, and let's be honest, also a big reputation driver for for us uh, within the tech community. Right, fashion brands are not well known uh, for the tech skills. We are known for yeah, doing t-shirts and clovers. <laughs> yeah. um, and you see that on the market, like there are tech tools, especially for the fashion vertical because mm-hmm. uh, the market is so big uh, and the resources are sip- simply not uh, within the fashion companies right. at the moment. Uh, and we want to change that 
paradigma kind of right for Marco right. Polo. Uh, so you mean the the community building aspect is very important for you, right? So building a community of talents around the the Marco Polo brand, community and name building. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of uh, building a brand as well. Uh, we're not expected to have such a great technology organization within the developer scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so that needs to be changed. Uh, that needs to be viewed differently, and we need to be on the on the radar uh, mm-hmm. for every developer within the relevant uh, regions mm-hmm. uh, to recruit them yeah right so uh let's let's back to the uh success factors of the of the projects once again um because we we already discussed uh, having right people having the right building blocks right um now you just need to build the whole thing uh so you got the concept uh, ux tech people on the team and my question is um how deep into you know development details into tech uh, you must dig as a digital uh, director? First of all, um, top level leadership like a director or even a CDO mm-hmm. um, never should write production code. Uh, it's not <laughs> right. possible. Um, whoever tries that fails. Um, I think you will agree on that. Yes. Um, I personally need to understand um, concept of the stack mm-hmm. uh, i need to see code and know what it is about mm-hmm. uh, and i need to connect the loose dots for developers and be a good sparing partner mm-hmm. for them in case of that ends uh, right. most importantly i need to create the environment helping them to create um mm-hmm. yeah so so we are trying to prepare the environment for the discussion i can say right so you moderate then this discussion and let the team find the best solution on their own right yeah, true. Uh, why should I make mm-hmm. a tech decision uh, if there are teammates uh, that are way deeper into the solution mm-hmm. already? Um, doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yes. Um, I need to help them uh, getting rid of being insecure uh, and back them up uh, when decisions fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens from time to time? Uh, I love failing, uh, but most people yeah. are used to remain silent after failing. Um, yeah. I think you've experienced that as well. Yes. Um, Others should be able to learn from individual mistakes uh, too, so we should uh, scream out the the, the fail, mm-hmm. um, and that's the environment I want to create. Um, yeah, it's hard from time to time. Um, if other parts of the company are not used to this failure friendly culture, um, but uh, slowly we're getting there, mm-hmm. uh, and really looking forward. That's that's interesting. Uh, so uh, next question is. Uh about the the remote work. Uh, COVID-19 pushed us all to work remotely. Um, And uh, as I observed how our teams, I mean, Vustofren and Marco Polo team work together, it seems like the remote work is the second nature for for your people. Um, Any tips on how you make it so efficient? Uh, Communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, Be visible, uh, even if you're far away. Yeah. Uh, inform as fast as possible about any updates within the company or within the team. Um, and from time to time, surprise your team, uh, do something unusual, mm-hmm. which is not about work uh, with your with your colleagues. Uh, really try to get them out mm-hmm. uh, of just working. Um, to be honest, it was not in our DNA, mm-hmm. uh, but somehow the people enjoy uh, and I can see the productivity increased already mm-hmm. a little um, because there are no disturbing parts um, right. which you have in a company obviously um, so yeah there are some future learnings we, we need to gain here um, mm-hmm. again it's about having the right people in place uh, and then the place of working doesn't make that much of a difference anymore right uh, that was my last question <laughs> so thanks for, for the discussion uh, and maybe I would surprise you with Additional question because I, <laughs> you said you you need to surprise your 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 team and I will do the same. So my last question is uh, about the tech trends um, because you know everything evolves uh, a lot uh, in recent years. This whole you know headless idea and, and microservices and AR and you know other crazy crazy things um, emerged. Um, which trends do you observe and you think will change the, the way the, the e-commerce works in, let's say, in the next three years? First of all, I think there is not a technology trend exclusively for e-commerce anymore. Um, real-time decisions are key to success in the future. Um, I would involve uh, the data science technologies 
as heavy topics uh, we need to be in control of um we need to be uh, we need to have them owned um, mm -hmm. that means to have them in control um that is always followed by uh, the ethic discussions uh, so when the decisions are not made by humans anymore mm -hmm. uh, and mostly machine driven uh, we need to find a new purpose for the workforce um even within a fashion company. Mm -hmm. um, I think that discussion needs to be led by people understanding both aspects, business and technology, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we we will need to create new rules within the companies as well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, technology is just on the driver's seat right now. Uh, and we need to, we need to, yeah, be ready uh, yeah. for the speed that will be created in the future. Awesome. Uh, so that that was uh, really my last question. So thank you for, for your time. It was really great talking to you. Indeed. Um, I enjoyed the talk. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, if you want to know more about our uh, deeper technological stuff, I would suggest uh, you have a look at the talk with Matthias as well. Uh, he's our head of software development and um, he will give you proper insight on the tech side. Uh, I just tried uh, to give you insights on the management side. Um, thank you so much and really looking forward um, to the collaboration in the future. Cool. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for uh, for uh, watching this, this episode. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or contact us via Slack or email or any other channel. Uh, by the way, if you like to uh, to read more on these headless microservices and new tech trends, uh, you can find some free ebooks on divante.com slash knowledge. Um, the link will be shared in the comments as well. So thanks again for, for watching us. Thank you, uh, Stefan, for this great uh, discussion. And see ya. Bye.